student uh, myself professor ashok kumar and i am working in department of mechanical engineering at dr subhas technical campus uh, first of all all viewers and student uh, you are welcome to my video lectures uh, this is the chapter number 5 uh, and the chapter name is years basically uh, this is my sixth continuous lecture on uh, same chapter chapter years uh, because uh, of the large content uh, i have divided the entire chapter in eight uh, video lecture series so this is the sixth video through which uh, we are going to discuss uh, remaining portion uh, of uh, chapter years a uh, well uh, the first and very much important topic that we are going to discuss is that the velocity ratio and the center distance uh, between warm gears uh, of course we have discussed a lot about uh, types of gears in which specially i have taken uh, the discussion on warm and warm wheel so let me still re uh, i want to revise back a little bit about warm and warm gears basically warm and warm gears are generally used to transmit power uh, from one shaft to another shaft uh, that shaft generally are non intersecting but uh, their axis are normally uh, having the right angle with each other so this is the special application of uh, warm gears whenever uh, the both the shaft axis on which uh, the warm and warm wheel are mounted having the perpendicular relation and uh, both axis are not uh, of course uh, uh, non intersecting if you are finding uh, any such uh, condition or application wherein we you need to transmit power in such a condition at that time a warm and a warm wheel plays vital role uh, for motion and power transmission generally uh, warm and warm gear is uh, we can say that the special case of spiral gear and in which uh, the shaft angle is maintained to be 90 degree uh, this is the special uh, case uh, because uh, if you have seen the profile of spiral gear it will look like very similar to that of the peak cylinder of a uh, worm so that's why uh, the both of the spiral as well as worm and worm will look like uh, very similar with uh, each other generally worm gear uh, uh, is uh, uh, the form of worm gear is uh, like a threaded screw while the worm gear look like a simple gear or we can say that the pin head. Basically uh, teeth on the worm gear envelop the threads on the worm uh, and uh, the worm have uh, between 1 to 8 teeth numbers. And uh, generally enter recently that means worm and worm wheel uh, used in material handling equipment, uh, machine tools. Uh, wherein uh, especially uh, worm and worm wheel uh, find its application. Uh, most important characteristic of worm and worm gearing is uh, high speed reduction ratio. That means uh, if you require to have uh, the low velocity ratio, uh, of course you should use uh, worm and uh, worm wheel assembly. And the speed reduction ratio uh, 100 gem 1 uh, you can have uh, the velocity reduction ratio if you are using warm and warm wheel. Generally, uh, uh, self-locking uh, mechanism provided uh, with warm and warm wheel, uh, especially for the lifting of the constructional material uh, in case of uh, the civil structural work. So this is what the basic about uh, warm and warm wheel. Now it is very important uh, to have the velocity ratio relation and uh, the uh, distance that uh, we can have the maximum uh, distance between the centers of worm as well as worm wheel. So we are going to start uh, the derivation or we can say that the relation of the velocity ratio and basically velocity ratio uh, it is the ratio of angle turned by worm gear and one wheel in particular one revolution that will be the velocity ratio that means uh, uh, by uh, giving one entire revolution 360 degree whatever the angle turned by one gear that will be if divided by the same uh, uh, the angle turned by the one wheel that will indicate uh, velocity ratio so over here velocity ratio will becomes uh, theta 1 upon theta 2 and exactly uh, we can say that theta 1 represent uh, the the angle turned by the worm gear and theta 2 will be the angle turned by the 
a warm wheel so over here uh, theta 1 is replaced by 2l upon d1 whereas uh, the wheel is turned to pi radian that means 360 degree so its uh, simplification gives us the velocity ratio like uh, capital l upon uh, pi d1 this is what the velocity ratio now we know that the pitch circle radius uh, uh, that is small r that is equal to mt into capital t upon 2 uh, r1 we can say that uh, the radius for the worm gear that will be the mt1 into t1 upon 2 and pitch circle radius for a worm wheel that will be the mt2 into t2 upon 2 uh, this is the basic relation for the pitch circle radius uh, this is the uh, relation uh, pitch circle radius relation for uh, worm gear and this is for uh, we can say that only worm so this is the pitch circle radius relation for worm wheel and uh, we can say that simply worm now uh, uh, after uh, velocity relation uh, derivation of velocity relation uh, it's time to have the discussion on center distance uh, that can be uh, keep uh, while you design the worm and worm wheel uh, assembly so center distance basically becomes the summation of the radius of the both of the worm as well as worm wheel so r1 plus r2 uh, its summation will give us the central uh, distance uh, that is small r now just you have to put the values of r1 and r2 so ultimately we know that the r1 relation of radius with respect to module and numbers of teeth will be look like that r1 is replaced by module into t1 upon 2 plus m t2 into or t2 upon 2 here mt1 that is the module on worm gear whereas mt2 that is the module on uh, uh, simply worm so uh, t1 stand for the numbers of teeth on worm gear or say the uh, pinion and t2 that is the number of teeth specially cut on we can say that the worm so this is the, the equation by still uh, you can have the option for the further simplification of the, this uh, relation by just uh, putting the values of mt1 uh, and uh, replacing this mt1 by the relation like mn uh, upon cos alpha upon 2 so by doing so uh, for similarly uh, for the mt2 you can also replace mt2 over here and by putting that uh, the value of mn upon cos alpha 2 upon 2 uh, you will have the entire equation look like mn upon cos alpha 1 into t1 upon 2 plus mn upon cos alpha 2 into t2 upon 2 now we know that mn by 2 is the common term and it will be separating out from the bracket so ultimately you will have a t1 upon cos alpha 1 plus t2 upon cos alpha 2 now further simplification uh, uh, by putting the values of uh, mn uh, and mn is replaced over here by mt2 cos alpha 2 uh, like that so you will have the ultimately uh, new relation mt2 cos alpha 2 upon 2 in bracket t1 upon cos alpha 1 plus t2 upon cos alpha 2 over here just mn is replaced by mt2 into cos alpha Then uh, we know that, uh, uh, that over here uh, after further simplification uh, cos alpha 2 is uh, multiplied with bracket terms each and every bracket term is multiplied with cos uh, alpha 2 so ultimately your equation will mt2 upon 2 that will equal to uh, that is uh, uh, mt2 upon, t, uh, upon 2 in bracket t1 cos alpha 2 upon cos alpha 1 plus uh, t2 cos alpha 2 upon cos alpha 2 uh, of course uh, there is a common term uh, t1 cos so ultimately mt2 upon 2 in bracket uh, this will be the separating out from the bracket so t1 cos 90 minus alpha 1 upon cos alpha 1 uh, plus 2 so basically in the, this relation what we have done just uh, we have uh, the, put the values of cos alpha 2 uh, like cos 90 minus alpha 1 and over here cos alpha 2 and cos alpha 2 are similar so cancel out so it will remain only t2 there so finally your equation will become mt2 upon 2 uh, t1 cos 90 minus alpha 1 upon cos alpha 1 minus t2 
now m t two upon two uh, bracket uh, the t one sine alpha one upon cos alpha one plus t two because sine alpha one uh, is there, uh, the cos ninety minus alpha one that is equal to sine alpha. So this term is replaced uh, with uh, the sine alpha one. So ultimately the equation will becomes uh, t one sine alpha one upon cos alpha one plus t two. And for the simplification, m t two upon two t one remain t one, whereas sine upon cos alpha one that will be equal to tan alpha one plus t two. And of course, so we know that uh, the alpha angle is always equal to angle delta. So alpha one is replaced by delta. So ultimately, your equation for the central distance uh, uh, between worm and worm will uh, will become small l is equal to m t two upon two bracket t uh, one tan delta uh, plus t two. This is the relation uh, through which uh, you can have the specific center distance between worm and worm bit. Now, after that, uh, topic number two that we are going to discuss that is efficiency of worm gears. Uh, see, in uh, previous slide, I have also discussed that uh, there is a little bit very similarity between spiral gear and worm gear. So whatever the relation uh, the spiral gear have for the efficiency, it can be equally applicable in case of uh, the worm gear. So uh, uh, we can have the relation of efficiency of spiral gear uh, is look like uh, efficiency is equal to cos alpha one into cos alpha plus five upon cos alpha two into cos alpha minus five. That is the actual equation of uh, efficiency of spiral gear. And because of very much similarity, we can use uh, same equation for the worm gears assembly too. And now, just we need to simplify or simplify more this relation. And uh, what simplification we are making? Uh, look at the uh, bottom side. Uh, just you, uh, we have we know that the angle of uh, shaft axis one is uh, replaced by delta, and angle of shaft axis two is replaced by 90 minus alpha. So just you have to put both of that values in the above this equation. Uh, you will have a uh, uh, cos delta into cos 90 minus alpha 1 uh, plus 5 upon cos so 90 minus alpha 1 into cos uh, delta minus 5. So further simplification uh, will give us relation cos delta into cos uh, 90 minus uh, delta break, uh, minus 5 upon cos 90 degree minus delta into cos delta minus 5. Uh, Now, uh, cos it will become uh, uh, cos delta into sine uh, delta minus five because uh, we know that the trigonometric relation of cos ninety minus theta will become sine. Uh, we can say that uh, the delta minus theta, uh, delta minus five. So over here, uh, uh, finally, equation will become cos delta into sine uh, delta minus five. Similarly, uh, you can uh, have. The replacement of this uh, relation by trigonometric equation cos 90 minus delta into cos delta minus 5 combinedly reply uh, replace uh, by this equation uh, and that is uh, the sine delta into cos uh, delta minus 5. Now uh, further simpli simplification it will give us uh, the sine upon cos uh, relation have the uh, it will convert into tan delta minus 5 whereas. Uh, Uh, sin phi upon cos phi will give us the relation for the tan delta. So this is what uh, the uh, general efficiency equation for uh, for the worm gears. Just uh, we have used the efficiency equation for spiral gear. We have replaced the shaft angle alpha one and alpha two. Then after uh, we have used the trigonometric relation and simplifying that relation. Ultimately, we have. The efficiency for the worm gears like tan delta minus five upon on tan delta. Again, uh, maximum efficiency is also the same as that of the spiral gear. And for the spiral gear, we have already derived the maximum efficiency relation. That is, uh, uh, maximum efficiency is equal to cos theta plus five plus one upon cos theta minus five plus one. And further simplification, it will go give us uh, the relation like cos. Uh, Uh, 90 plus 5 plus 1 cos 90 minus 5 plus 1. Over here, one thing that you might be have the question that why theta is replaced by 90 degree. This is so because whenever the cos angle, that means angle between the worm and worm axis uh, theta is maximum, uh, 
एट दैट टाइम और द थीटा इज इक्वल टू नाइन्टी डिग्री एट दैट टाइम द एफिशिएंसी इज द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू एंड इन दिस थियरी वी रिक्वायर मैक्सिमम एफिशिएंसी सो थीटा शुड बी पुट इज इक्वल टू नाइन्टी डिग्री इन इन द मैक्सिमम एफिशिएंसी इक्वेशन नाउ फर्दर सॉल्विंग दिस रिलेशन एज कोर्स नाइन्टी डिग्री प्लस फाइव विल गिव अर्स द माइनस साइन फाइव वेर एज कोर्स नाइन्टी माइनस फाइव विल गिव अर्स अ पॉजिटिव साइन फाइव सो अल्टिमेटली मैक्सिमम एफिशिएंसी रिलेशन फॉर द वोम एंड वन गियर असेंबली विल बिकम वन माइनस साइन फाइव अपॉन वन प्लस साइन फाइव नाउ थर्ड एंड लास्ट टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंड दैट इज पिच कॉन एंगल फॉर वी वेल गियर्स बेसिकली इन दैट पर्टिक्युलर थियरी इज वी आर गोइंग टू डिराइव अ रिलेशन फॉर द वॉट शूड बी द पिच एंगल लाइक गामा वन एंड गामा टू दैट शूड बी चूजन इन दैट वे सो दैट द एंटायर डिजाइन ऑफ बी एल गी एस बिकम अ वेरी टफ एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग सो बिफोर डिराइविंग दैट रिलेशन लेट हेव द फ्यू टर्मिनोलॉजी लाइक गामा वन एंड गामा वन इज स्टैंड फॉर दी पिच कॉन एंगल ऑफ बी एल गी एर वन दैट वी रिक्वायर टू कैलक्युलेट रिलेशन फॉर गामा वन सिमिलरली गामा टू दैट इज द पिच कॉन एंगल फॉर दी बी एल गी एर टू थीटा इज अ साफ्ट एंगल एंड यू कैन सी दैट फ्रॉम दी फिगर इट इज एक्चुअली साफ्ट एंगल थीटा इज समेशन ऑफ द पिच कॉन एंगल ऑफ गी एर वन एंड पिच कॉन एंगल ऑफ गी एर टू इफ यू आर समिंग बोथ ऑफ देन अल्टीमेटली यू विल हैव द थीटा दैट मीन्स साफ्ट एंगल थीटा देन आफ्टर आर वन दैट इज द पिच सर्कल रेडियस ऑफ गी एर वन एंड आर टू दैट विल बी द पिच सर्कल रेडियस ऑफ बी वेल गी एर नंबर टू दैट मीन्स दिस इज आर टू एंड दिस वन विल बी द आर वन आफ्टर दैट टी वन दैट इज द नंबर ऑफ टीथ ऑन बी वेल गी एर वन एंड ऑफ कोर्स टी टू दैट मीन्स द नंबर ऑफ टीथ ऑन बी वेल गी एर टू ना ओमेगा वन एंड ओमेगा टू स्टैंड फॉर द एंगुलर वेलोसिटी ऑफ बी वेल गी एर वन एंड बी वेल गी एर टू एंड फाइनली कैपिटल जी स्टैंड फॉर द गियर रेशियो एंड गियर रेशियो इज एक्चुअली द रेशियो ऑफ नंबर ऑफ टीथ ऑन वी कैन से दैट बी वेल गी एर टू टू द नंबर ऑफ टीथ ऑन बी वेल गी एर वन एंड अफकोर्स दैट टी टू अपॉन टी वन कैन बी रिप्लेस बाय आर टू अपॉन आर वन दैट इज वी हैव नंबर्स ऑफ टाइम डिस्कस अर्लियर द रिलेशन बिटवीन नंबर्स ऑफ टीथ एंड रेडियस एंड अगेन आर टू अपॉन आर वन कैन बी रिप्लेस बाय ओमेगा वन अपॉन ओमेगा टू दैट इज द एंगुलर वेलोसिटी नाउ जस्ट फोकस अपॉन द फिगर दैट यू हैव गिवन एंड फ्रॉम दैट फिगर यू कैन हैव द ओ पी दैट मीन्स काइंडली कंसिडर दिस ट्राइंगल and from the triangle uh, evaluate the relation for op diagonal op and it will become r1 upon sin gamma 1 and of course uh, if you are considering uh, this triangle too and uh, from this triangle you can also have the relation for op and it will become also uh, r2 upon sin gamma 2 now just uh, you have to calculate the relation for gamma 1 and uh, uh, similarly gamma 2 now we know that uh, sin gamma 1 is equal to uh, r1 upon r2 sin gamma 2 basically it is the, the ratio of uh, the sin angle to that of uh, the angle between the radius of uh, we will gear uh, 1 and 2 ultimately the entire equation is uh, sin gamma 1 upon sin gamma 2 that is equal to r1 upon r2 and from that relation uh, Uh, the entire equation is converted in terms of sin gamma 1 so it will become sin gamma 1 is equal to r1 upon r2 into sin gamma 2 uh, still you can have the further modification of this relation by putting the values of sin theta minus gamma uh, and it is replaced uh, by this relation uh, like uh, sin gamma 2 is equal to sin theta minus gamma 1 simply uh, we know that sin x minus y become sin uh, x into sin y minus cos x into sin y like that uh, uh, this uh, sin theta minus gamma is replaced by the trigonometric relation r1 upon r2 bracket sin theta into cos gamma 1 minus cos theta into sin gamma 1 now uh, from this relation uh, just you have to divide uh, left and right hand side uh, by cos gamma 1 Uh, to this uh, relation sin gamma 1 so ultimately your equation will become sin gamma 1 uh, 
upon cos gamma 1 that is equal to r1 upon r2 uh, sin theta into cos gamma 1 upon cos gamma 1 so cos gamma 1 upon cos gamma 1 which we cancel out so only sin theta will be remain there uh, minus cos theta into sin gamma 1 upon cos gamma 1 so sin upon cos gamma 1 it will give us a relation 10 gamma 1 and that is equal to r1 upon r2 sin theta minus cos theta again sin upon cos gamma 1 that is equal to 10 gamma 1 now uh, further simplification uh, you will have uh, just uh, uh, re, uh, move this uh, radius ratio and to the left hand side you will have r2 upon r1 into 10 gamma 1 that is equal to sin theta minus cos theta into 10 gamma 1 again uh, 10 gamma 1 uh, in bracket r2 upon r1 plus uh, cos theta is equal to sin theta this entire term is moved to the left hand side and uh, separating out the 10 gamma 1 from the entire uh, terms you will have the 10 gamma 1 uh, bracket r2 upon r1 plus cos theta and that is equal to uh, sin theta so this was the relation for the pitch cone angles uh, that uh, through which you can have the uh, you can design the pitch angle and make the, the uh, we can say that uh, uh, we will gears in such a way that uh, it can transmit effectively motion and power so dear student uh, this was the lectures in which we have specially uh, calculated and derived the relation for pitch cone angle we have also discussed about uh, the central distance between home and home gears uh, and so many topics still uh, remain to discuss uh, which will be covered on uh, my next video lecture uh, still you are finding any difficulty regarding uh, the concept of clearing or uh, during the any topic that you are finding any difficulty let me inform we have the solution. Uh, thank you for your kind of attendance to my video lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much.